congratulations on making it to level two. Let's take our order of operations to the next level. So we can get really complex with these expressions where we've got these numbers and operations, lots going on. So the first example of the little bit more complex order of operations is when you have some complex parentheses happening. <coughs> Excuse me. So then when there are parentheses, we have to follow the order of operations within those parentheses first. Since that's our first step, we have to do everything inside of them first before we move on to the rest of the expression. So let's go ahead and do this first problem together. I'm going to show you step by step. Go ahead and follow along with these first three. So this first problem, we've got our parentheses here, so I'm completely ignoring the plus 6 times 2. I'm going to keep writing it as I go, but I'm not even dealing with that until the very end. Okay, but within the parentheses, it's kind of like it has a little expression within the parentheses. So I'm going to do exponents first. And so 2 to the third is 8, not 6, 8. Okay, and so now I just rewrite the whole problem. Okay, very, very important to keep doing that. Rewrite the whole problem, especially when they're more complex like this. Okay, so now I've still got my parentheses because I haven't done everything inside yet. I've got addition versus division. So I'm going to do division first, and I get 2 from that. So I rewrote everything else. Make sure you gain all this with me. If you need to pause or rewind the video, please feel free to do so. Okay, so now I only have one last thing in my parentheses. That's 8 plus 2, so I get 10. And so now I can stop writing the parentheses because I've done everything in there and I followed it in order. So after simplifying everything in parentheses, we end up with 10. So now I've got addition versus multiplication. So I'm going to do multiplication first, which is 6 times 2 to get 12. And then we're left with 10 plus 12 to get 22. Notice how I circled my answer. Make sure you do that or uh, put a square around it, something. Okay? So again, if you need to go back, please feel free. But otherwise, the next one is what happens when we have parentheses and exponents, meaning when the exponent is on the outside. So again, we need to simplify everything in the parentheses first, but we're going to keep bringing this exponent along with us until we get our final answer from within the parentheses. And then the exponent will apply to whatever that number ends up being. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So starting with parentheses, I've got subtraction, I've got multiplication. I'm going to do multiplication first. So I get 6 from that. Again, notice how I just rewrote everything else, including that exponent, just bringing everything along with me. So now I have to do the 11 minus 6 to get 5. And now it's okay to not write your parentheses, but you do still need to bring that exponent right along, and it goes right with the 5. Now I can do that exponent to get 25, and then 25 plus 4, 29. Again, circling my answer. Okay? Again, please go back if needed. Don't feel like you need to move on with me if you're not ready, if you don't understand something. Okay, the last one is when we have a fraction bar. And a fraction bar, again, remember, means division. Um, but the slight difference here is we kind of sort of do it out of order. So I know division normally comes before addition and subtraction, but when you have a fraction bar like this, we really think of it more as an expression on top and an expression on bottom, whether it's one number or two numbers or whatever on the bottom. So we're going to simplify everything on top first. And if we did have more than one thing on the bottom, we'd also want to simplify all that first. And the very last thing we'll do is deal with the fraction bar. So you'll see what I mean as we go through. So I'm going to start at the top. And exponents would come before um, any of those other operations anyway. So I'm going to do 4 squared, or 4 to the second power, which is 16. So I get 16 minus 16 plus 21 over 7. So again, I'm simplifying everything on top first. I know division normally comes before, but it's much more complicated because if we did division before, that means we would have to do 16 divided by 7, 16 divided by 7, 21 divided by 7, and it's just going to make it super complicated. So in this particular situation, it is okay. You are doing it correctly by simplifying everything on top first. That is only for these situations. Okay, if it's just division, then you do need to divide with that. But since this is a fraction bar, that 7's applied to all the numbers on the top. And so that's why we want to simplify the top first before we deal with that 7. Okay, it doesn't really matter. It's just this is the easier way to do it rather than doing that division in the timely manner that we normally would. Okay, it's the same thing, but we're doing it the easier way. All right, so I've got subtraction. i got addition. I'm doing it left to right. So 16 minus 16 first to get 0. 0 plus 21, i got to finish the top, very simple, gets me 21, so now I have 21 over 7, and again, remember that's like division, so 21 divided by 7 equals 3. 
So see how easy that was? I mean, again, I would have gotten the same answer had I done the division first. It just would have been a lot harder to do. So this made it a lot easier while still getting the correct answer. Okay, so you have a few practice problems to go try on your own. You will check those with an answer key, and then you will get a teacher signature, so make sure you change your tracking page color. Then you just have to correct your pre-assessment, um, do an assessment reflection, and then you're ready for the summative. So really practice those skills. You've got this. This is the last new thing. So good luck. You can do it.